Hello everyone, in this session we will be walking through deploying the Migration Assistant solution. So we'll start with a CloudFormation template. We will configure our migration options. At the end of this we'll have a migration console that we can access and kick off our migration actions such as backfill, metadata, or traffic capture and replay migration. And we'll have other sessions to go into those in more details. But first, on this landing page I want to point out a couple things. The first handy thing is this implementation guide. So this will cover the steps I go through in this session, particularly the deploy the solution section where I'll be walking through these steps. The other thing is this architecture diagram. This includes a walkthrough of steps to explain how we go through setting up this infrastructure and moving data from source cluster to target cluster. And once we're actually ready to start setting up a migration assistant solution, we have these two buttons here. So this new VPC button will as you'd expect, create a new VPC with two public and two private subnets. We will then place all our migration resources into that VPC. So this is particularly useful for deployment scenarios where we want less input or cases where we're working with public clusters that need less networking setup. Another option is this existing VPC where we will place our migration resources into some VPC you provide. And so this is, can also be useful from the networking side with clusters that already exist in some VPC and we want to limit network setup that we need to do, say between clusters that were in different VPCs or MA being in its own VPC. So let's go ahead and kick off our new VPC option. And you can see it has loaded in our S3 URL. Actually before this, let's actually pick up the region that we want. I'll go with US East 2 here. You can see our options are pretty limited for a new VPC since these details around VPC ID don't need to be provided. We can pick some stack name here. I'll leave the stage name as dev. This will be useful for identifying our resources later. Acknowledge, and we can kick off this CFN stack deployment. Another thing we can look at is an existing VPC. So a similar model here. The main difference you'll see is in this parameters options for this template. So you'll see here we can take in some VPC ID. We'll want to pick at least two subnets. So in this case, for my central VPC, I can pick private two and private one in US East 1A and US East 1B. And so those are going to be the two availability zones I want to pick. And then I can provide some stack name, maybe a stage name like demo. So I, I can uniquely identify this deployment knowledge like before, and we can kick this off. And so you can see here that our Actually, let's switch back to the region we deployed our first stack in, US East 2. And you can see it is still in progress of creating. And we will hop into this EC2 instance it creates once it's completed. Okay, our migration assistant stack has finished deploying now. If we look at the resources, we can see we created EC2 instance as well as several resources related to setting up the VPC that we've created. If you're following along in this step guide we are now in step two and so this first talks through having some role with permissions to actually access this ec2 instance with ssm so i have a role that has already added these permissions and i will continue but any role that you're using should have these permissions to be able to access this ec2 instance that we have deployed so the first thing we'll want to do is actually grab this instance id so in my terminal here i will run this command now in this Terminal here already has credentials set up for my AWS account. I can echo this and we can see the particular instance ID. And the next thing I'll want to do is actually start my session with SSM for this instance. So here I can copy this command and put it in the terminal. Now a couple of things to note here are you want to make sure your region lines up with where you deploy it. So in my case, US East 2. And you also want to make sure that your stage name here is right. I kept dev, so no change necessary here. And this command should be good to start. And so this will put me on the EC2 instance that we deployed inside this directory that only has an init bootstrap shell script. And so this instance that we're on here is a tool to set up an environment for deploying our migration stacks and actually building our images from source. So this init bootstrap, when we run it, will actually pull our open source migrations repo, uh, run through a build of all our Docker images, uh, our Gradle applications, and as well as set up dependencies we need for things like CDK to actually deploy our migration resources. 
So let's go ahead and kick this off. This will take around 15 minutes to get this all set up. And once this is completed, we will be able to actually start configuring some of the migration options. All right, our init bootstrap script has finished now, installing our needed dependencies and building our Docker images. One quick thing I want to point out is we access the EC2 instance this way with AWS SSM. Another way I've seen some users find benefit is to actually come into the cons AWS console itself, find the EC2 instance we deploy, click into it and hit connect. And then we can go to session manager and connect via this way. One note here when connecting via this way is that we do need to assume privileges and actually enter into our proper directory. And this is handled automatically with the SSM command uh, that we mentioned here, since it's using this document, which takes care of that for you. But if you're going through the AWS console, accessing with session manager for one of these commands is equivalent. So with that said, let's switch back to our actual terminal. Our init bootstrap script has finished. And this script is pulling from the latest release of the open search migrations repo. When it performs its setup, it is worth mentioning that if someone wanted to, they could specify a particular release tag, maybe instead of the latest, a previous, or a newer one, or working off a specific branch, such as main, could be specified if a release, say, hasn't been cut yet, or a customer needs a, a bug fix for a specific branch. And if someone was going to do this, they should first fetch from origin to get any new tags or branches that may have been created, and then uh, after pulling that latest, they could execute the init bootstrap with, say, a, a branch of main like this command. But for now, we are fine with using the latest release. Following our step guide, we can now access the Migration Assistant CDK package. So let's go ahead and access that. Several files here, but all we are really concerned with is our CDK context.json file. This is what we will customize to get the migration options that we want for this particular migration. So if we take a look at that file, you'll see a lot of templating already done with comments to, to give you some helpful hints as you walk through this. It's worth noting that your stage and VPC ID have already been filled in from details you provided in the CloudFormation template deployment. So those don't need to be changed. Uh, what will need to be changed is our target cluster details, source cluster details, and options if we're enabling traffic capture and replay as well as RFS. So let's go ahead and fill in our source cluster details here. Actually, let's start with the target cluster. If I go to the console, I have two domains here. For my target, I will copy the endpoint and paste this in. It is using SIGV4. Go ahead and remove this basic auth parameters, since all I care about is my SIGV4 auth. And the region again is US East 2. I'm using Open Search Managed Service for my target here. So I will remove the signing name for Open Search Serverless. Okay, and that is my target cluster set up for my source. Similarly, I will take the domain endpoint and fill it in. Again, I'm showing two clusters in the managed service, but this could very well be a cluster that is hosted in EC2. And we take a load balancer endpoint and fill in here. And so if you saw from the console, this is a ES68 source. So I will fill that in. And I am using basic auth on this source cluster. Okay, I can remove the options for SIGV4 since that's not relevant in this cluster. And I will go ahead and move that extra space, a comma. My username I want to use is admin. And I have a secret here, which will contain no key values, just the plain text secret value paste it into the secrets manager secret. So no, no formatting, no JSON around that. And so I can then paste that into this parameter here. And for this particular migration that we're doing, I want to have traffic replay enabled as well as RFS. So we can specify traffic replay arguments here. RFS is enabled by default already, as we can see. And I will follow the guidance here of leaving these capture proxy and target cluster proxy services not enabled by default so that I can verify my source cluster connectivity first and then I can come back and redeploy and enable these. So I will go ahead and save this. And to give some more context on those options there, 
definitely take a look at this documentation. Customize the migration option, step three. If we click into what we have listed here, links to our wiki, this wiki is being deprecated and replaced with this documentation website. So we'll go ahead and click into there. And we can see here for the different migration types we have, we give a template of some expected configuration options that you'll want. And so for our case, we're actually doing a combination of really all of these. And so you saw me walk through and fill out the context for that. And so going back to our guide, now that we've customized our options, we can set our default region. In this case, we're in US East 2. If you're not bootstrapped your region, this is the time to do it, to set up the needed CDK toolkit stack. So if you look at a particular region, this toolkit was already existing, so no need to run our bootstrap command. Item to make sure that you run is actually creating the service linked role if this is your first time deploying one of these services. So open source service, ECS, in the account that should be created. These already exist for the current account I'm in, so no need to, to run again. And finally, once we verify this kind of initial setup, we could actually go forward with deploying the migration stacks, which will allow us to kick off our migration actions. So let's go ahead and copy this. We come back here, we can paste it in and kick off this deployment. And it's worth noting that the deployment time is a bit longer for our traffic capture and replay scenarios where we are deploying an MSK cluster that takes a bit of time. And we'll use this MSK cluster to store the Kafka records that we capture from incoming traffic. And then our traffic replay will read from that MSK Kafka topic to populate your target cluster with those same requests. So this is kicking off and we should expect it to complete in anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes with all of our migration services enabled. Okay, we can see that our CDK deployment is finished of our migration stacks. If we were to go to AWS console, we can see those stacks now showing up here, their region and stage name, including their stack name. If we come back to our Bootstrap instance, look at the CDK context. A couple of things I wanted to point out here. One is uh, a bit of caution. Some of the arguments you're passing here, say for traffic group are extra args or for the re-index from snapshot, extra args that could also be specified. These options are passed along to the ECS service that we create for these different migration services. So a word of caution that there is some delay after deploying to potentially find incorrect arguments that may have been specified. Another issue I sometimes see you just run into is around this capture proxy setup. So in our case, we did not enable it on our deployment initially so that we can go into the migration console and verify that connection first. Often I will see this deployed initially and a source connection can't be made and we'll see the ECS service in this loop of trying to spin up and failing and a bit of confusion for users as to what is going on. And ultimately it is the ECS service failing because it cannot connect to the source. So if we actually look in ECS, we can see our migration services existing here. Our migration console is the only service that has an active task running, and we'll access that shortly. Our other services for RFS and traffic replayer, and what will be the capture proxy and target proxy later, do not have a task running as a default here. And so once we actually kick off the migration for those, we'll see the task spinning up. So let's go back now. What we want to do is actually access the migration console now, and get a bit more details there. So we now need to access our open source documentation inside this migration console page here. We can see directions for access to migration console. I'm going to go ahead and copy the shortened version of this since we already have the directory readily available. And if you remember, our stage name was dev with the US East 2 region. And so this will allow us to SSM into the migration console. And this migration console as we show as easy a service, this is the hub of where we can control our migration actions to start, stop them, get a status of their progress. This is also where we can monitor our source and target cluster and ultimately just to track and monitor our migration. So one of the first things that's often useful to do is to check if we can connect to our source and target. So you can see here, our connection was successful with a 6.8 source and a 2.19 target. Uh, and this console library here is loaded up with details that we specified in the CDK context. So it's able to assume the auth it needs to talk to 
source and target without having to specify it and having it contain this library. And so this console library starts with the console command. It does have auto completion for doing things such as clusters, kit indices. So I can get details on documents that exist in source and target. Another really useful tool is our console clusters. So you can see you can specify source or target. I'll specify target. Just get a look at, say, any normal call I would make to my target cluster endpoint. I can make here. And so we can see that call being made, which is the reference to our target cluster. And so since we see that we can connect and source to target, we can exit out of this migration console, go back to our bootstrap instance, come to our CDK context, and enable these services, for capture proxy and the target proxy. Again, these are needed for traffic capture and replay scenarios. So save that and go ahead and kick off the same deployment command that we ran earlier. With this one being much quicker, only needing to redeploy these services that have been added or changed. Alrighty, we can see that our CK deployment has completed for our capture proxy and target proxy services. If we go to the ECS page in the AWS console, we can see those services up and healthy now. Another word of caution here, whenever you're doing a CDK deployment for an additional time, you wanna make sure that you don't have any migrations currently in progress. So we can see here RFS, traffic replayer, or both spun down so that we can proceed with another deployment. If this wasn't the case, we could be causing issues as we'll set these back to zero on deployment, which could interrupt ongoing migration and cause some unexpected results both RFS and the traffic replayer. So with that deployment, we now have all of our migration stacks created, our source and target able to be accessed, and we can now move forward with access in the migration console and kicking off these migrations.